Westminster awoke to the familiar sound of protest, but this time unfamiliar tactics. Extinction Rebellion said today was about unity and peaceful action. Lined up along Parliament Square and across Whitehall, crowds made from over 200 environmental groups. We're here representing Fairtrade Foundation in the UK. We're part of Business Declares. We're here because we're representing the climate fresque. So calm is secured for now, but what accompanies this is an ultimatum for the government to stop issuing new licenses for fossil fuels and to set up citizens' assemblies to let ordinary people's voices be heard when it comes to solving this crisis. And a response by 5 p.m. on Monday, or they say they could be back to their old ways. No social movement in history has ever succeeded without a degree of disruption. You look at the women's rights with the suffragettes, Martin Luther King and, um, uh, and apartheid. All of that involved rustling some feathers, and that's what Extinction Rebellion's done before. Do you think this is similar to apartheid? Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. In terms of the, the scale of the problem, it's massive. The government is not doing enough. Governments are not doing enough. You know, it was 40 degrees last summer in this country. Imagine what it is in countries that are often hotter. Maybe public support is not with disruptive tactics. Um, so I think it's really good that they're doing um, a more of a peaceful approach. Extinction Rebellion is known for being innovative when it comes to disruption. But from today, that strategy changes. It's day one of a four-day marathon of protest, which happens to coincide with an actual marathon on Sunday. Extinction Rebellion has promised they won't disrupt the London sporting event, something the more radical wings of the Green movement can't guarantee. The climate crisis isn't going to stop in a weekend, so our care and concern shouldn't stop there either. That's why Just Stop Oil is going to be keeping the pressure on the government day after day after day until we win. Last month, the government admitted their new net zero strategy would fail to cut greenhouse gas emissions enough to hit their own targets. And a UN report today outlines record levels for greenhouse gases, global temperature and sea levels yet again. While the cause endures, changing tactics might be wise. Just today, two activists were jailed for causing traffic gridlock when they scaled a bridge on the Dartford crossing in October last year. The judge said he wanted to deter others from copying them. And if this doesn't work, will it be back to sort of more disruption? We've always said that what we're trying to do is focus on bringing people together now. What we've said to people is, if we stop sitting in the road all the time, will you come and join us? And it seems to have worked. If it does work as they hope, and an estimated 50,000 people attend, this could be the UK's largest climate crisis uprising in history.